Now I'm going to take you through the tools. Tools. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but um, real quick, again, I, t I try to name my scri scripts, you know, real descriptive. So blank menu item or blank menu quad item <laughs> is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. What I wanted to do is to be able to put an empty space with uh, nothing here. Uh, I pretty much don't use it anymore. I'm just leaving it there in case anyone was using it. Uh, check objects for zero rotation is pretty obvious. You know, let me just do a couple spheres here. Now, if I run this script, it's going to say that none of them are uh, rotated. So let me rotate a couple of these, run it again, and you can see these two have been rotated. So that way you can collapse them to zero and get them to be nice and normal again. Um, check objects for modifiers, double click on that, it'll show you which objects have modifiers on them. Uh, let's go ahead and scale one of these like so. Okay, check objects for non-uniform scale. There, that's an object that has a scale. You can see here it's uh, 83.787. Check objects for position at origin. So obviously none of these have their position at origin. Their pivots are all in the centers. So this is a case where I would, you know, collapse to zero. So that, you know, when I run point caches off of them, they're going to work the way they're supposed to. Oh, that's nice. So you'll see if I grab this that the pivot is now at zero, zero. So if I run that again, it tells me that everything's cool. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to show you another tool. So let's take a, um, a point helper. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a spline here. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a path controller on this. Okay. So we'll go to here. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do anything with that. So I'm going to select this. This is So you can see the script right here called copy path controlled object along same spline. All right. So I double click on that. Now what happens is my listener comes up and it's asking me how many uh, how many do I, how many copies do I want along that spline of that object so I'm gonna say 20 okay and let's get that back out of the way and you can see I now have 20 objects equally spaced along that spline so you can kind of see how you know that'll come in handy once in a while <laughs> once in a while um, if I obviously move that you can see they're all gonna stay equally spaced okay uh, it doesn't matter where you put the spline or how you shape it. They'll always be the same distance apart. comes in handy. I, I've had it come in handy a lot. So let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, find duplicate named objects. It's kind of obvious. It'll find anything that has duplicate or you know multiple names. Uh, flip normals and collapse the stack. It's just a, a one-hit way of taking an object. Like if you have an object that's... You know, obviously not that. We'll create a sphere again. And we'll put a normal modifier on here and we'll flip it and collapse it down. Okay. So I have this object and what I want to do is I want to flip the normals and collapse it. So I just double click that. Flips the normals and collapse the stack. So it's just a quick way to do that. That's all. Nothing special. Hypertree I've showed you before. Um, that's what I'm using right now. And hypertree favorites obviously pull up much quicker, so it's good to build that up. And you know, you still have the same controls like create macros, uh, edit script. Uh, you can rename or delete them from here as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna do the renamer and I hyper I and I editor uh, later uh, in a separate video. Move object to point on surface. It's basically the same as doing the attachment controller, but instead of putting an attachment controller, it just moves the object there. Uh, render range by X speed, I will show you in another video. Replace object, parent, and name. Um, so uh, if I have an object that's linked to another object, uh, I can replace it with another object and it'll keep the same name and delete it. Uh, you just have to use it to kind of get an idea of what I mean. 
Uh, script Clip Manager. This one's actually really neat. Uh, what this allows you to do is to put, uh, like, uh, like a little macro, like a little script, you know, here, uh, which you can also save and load, so that if you need to do something real quick and dirty, you know, like like this one up here, I use, I, I had to use the other day. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I I now have these spheres. I'm gonna put a quick um, edit mesh modifier. Just let's make those unique. Okay, so they each have a modifier on them. So I just wrote this quick little tool to delete the first modifier on every object. So, you know, I can just pull up my script clips, you know, hit save and load if I want to. And if I'm doing a whole bunch of things over and over again, what I could do is I could go ahead and minimize that. So I just have, you know, evaluate A, B, and C, which corresponds to script A, script B, and script C. Oh, look at that. Script C, script C. Okay, this is script B. <laughs> All right, and I will fix that. You can see the buttons are correct. So we'll do that now. What I'm going to do is grab, um, I'll grab all of these, and I'm going to hit evaluate A. Now I'm going to check them, and you'll see they no longer have edit mesh modifiers on them. So, like I said, it's just a quick and dirty way to throw some lines of code in there and then use them when you need to. Okay? And select objects with selected instance modifier. So, if I have a modifier, let's say, okay, let's do that and say, again, edit mesh okay and let's do let's take that and put let's just do that okay so I'll grab that and I'm gonna select the edit mesh modifier okay and then I'll double click this and what it'll do is it'll go through the entire scene and find which modifiers which objects have that modifier okay so it's actually pretty cool you know alright let me delete that real quick Snapshot sample fade. Now this is something that I used for a show called Sports Science, and I'll show you how it works. So I got this object, and let's say I've got it animating like so, and let's do that and that. Okay. Now let's say I want to, you know, I want to take a snapshot over time, but then I want that snapshot to fade uh, out as it goes along. Okay. So I have this selected. Okay. Double click on that. And I got my start and end frame. Let's say I want, um, yeah, 10 samples. Fade in, I want to do five frames, fade out over 10 frames, okay? So then I'm gonna hit create snapshots. Oh, okay, <laughs> hold on. Okay, so what happened was I messed up on the, uh, the dialogue uh, part of the script. So I fixed it, of course. So let's go ahead and <laughs> run it again. <laughs> okay, so fade in zero or one, okay, and I want to fade out over, let's say, 20 frames, okay? So start frame zero, end frame 100. I'm going to do 10 snapshots along that time frame, and each snapshot is going to fade in in one frame and fade out over 20. So let's do this and go create snapshots. All right, so let's do that. So you can see now that they are fading in, okay, that one comes on, fades in, fades out over 20 frames. Boom, boom, boom. Well, this snapshot, the camera recording utility is kind of making this not look very right, but it is working the way it's supposed to, believe it or not. Um, so that's that. <laughs> uh, and that's it so um, I'll come back and I'm going to cover the renamer and the render range by x-speed which is really cool